Good day, good day, good day. It is Thursday evening, 8 o'clock, and it is It's All About You time. This particular live message is for the parents. Parents, I want to talk to you tonight, and I want to just really be authentic. Uh, my current situation is I'm married. I have four biological children. My husband has six. We have 10 together. Um... And I wanted to share just, you know, some very authentic feelings because as a parent, you always want to do good. You want to, you know, be the best example for your children. You want to make sure that they have their needs met. And in some cases, all of their wants and desires, if we can. But I think we went wrong. I think we went wrong, babe. I really do because... For some strange reason, kids appear to be ungrateful today. I mean, it's just like they aren't really concerned about what a parent has to go through to make things happen for them. Uh, I don't know about y'all, but, you know, sometimes, and it's not all your kids, it's not everybody. Sometimes it's just one or two that have you feeling like they, you know, don't appreciate you like things are just expected, like you are supposed to do all the things you are supposed to do for them. And I just had this overwhelming feeling of unappreciated. I felt like I was just unappreciated. And it's not just one thing. It's, you know, several things that can happen. Like you're taking your child back and forth to football games or, you know, uh, all of their types of extracurricular activities, or you're taking them back and forth to school, or let's just say they're in college and they had to have a parent plus loan with your name on it to get into college. I have two in college right now and they wouldn't be in college if it wasn't for the parent plus loan assisting them with being there. Okay. Didn't nobody go with a full scholarship. No way. Okay. And you got some of your kids go to college and they don't even call. They don't even talk to you. They don't even answer their phone. They act like you don't exist. Like, you know, you're no longer there or, you know, you're taking them places, you're doing things. And then they don't even say, thank you. I got one baby boy, everything you do for her, she will say, mom, thank you. But some of the rest of them children, do you think they say thank you? Or if they do say thank you, you know, they got something else that they want right behind it. Sometimes that ungrateful spirit, we have to pray for our kids. We got to pray for them because I don't even think they know they are ungrateful. I don't even think that they realize that they don't know what parents have gone through to make sure that they even had a roof over their head, that the lights stay on every single month, that the water is still running, that they use to wash their behind every single month, the food that they consume, and sometimes they consume just because they're bored, not even because they're hungry, that that has to happen because the parents have had to do something to make that happen. It just doesn't appear. It just doesn't happen. And sometimes, you know, the kids are just like, you know, they'll ha even have this entitlement type of uh, spirit about them. And it's like, wh why ain't you cook yet? You're like, excuse me? Your arms work, your mouth work, your feet work. You can go in the refrigerator and cook just like I can. Or... Why ain't my clothes washed? I don't have no drawers. I don't have no underwear. I don't have no... And you're like, excuse me, the washing machine do work. And your hands and your mouth and everything else works. You can wash your own clothes. You are 18 years old. So it just gets some, sometimes to the point where you just feel like, <laughs> I'm about to snap your neck. If you don't get out of my face with this, I think I better have and you better do for me type of attitude. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. And so what I have decided I'm going to do, I'm going to pull back on some of these niceties that they seem to take for granted. And I'm going to have them provide them for themselves and see how they like that. Because obviously me doing it is uh, expected. So since it's not appreciated, but expected, I'm going to kind of clean that up because I have to take a little responsibility. I have spoiled my kids. I've tried to give them everything that they wanted. And 
now I'm going to stop it because when I feel unappreciated and I feel like you have this entitlement and you don't even know what I have to go through and sometimes I don't even feel like being at a job, but I go sick because I know that I need my money so that I can make sure they have what they need. I promise you, mm -mm. Sharon is not going to do as much as she used to do. She is going to pull back on some of the things that she know they can do for themselves. And I'm going to stop being an enabler and I'm going to start enabling them to do for themselves. So they'll have an appreciation for what it costs to do it. So I'm talking to the parents today. I want you to pull back just a little bit and start allowing our kids who can't afford to do so. Do you know I got some kids that work every single day and they don't even call their mama and say, mama, do you need $20? Can I get you some gas? Are you okay? Do you need anything? But they'll come in here with all these expensive things and then, you know, don't even say a word. And it's like, why don't you check on your mama? See how she doing. Why don't you check on your daddy? It's not just mamas. It's daddies too. Daddies are forking out sometimes more than the mamas, especially when it's a two-parent household. Daddies are taking care of everything. And even sometimes, and I'll be honest with you, even sometimes mamas don't say thank you to the daddies. They don't say, I'm grateful to have you as a husband helping us take care of our kids. So, you know, maybe we teaching them how to be ungrateful. Because I show my closet ain't clean. And I'm going to call my mama. I'm going to call my mama. Now, and some of y'all ain't even talked to your own mama. If you on this line tonight and you haven't talked to your own mama, I'm going to ask you to put aside every weight of sin, to forgive her for whatever she said or done to you, and call your mama and tell her, Mama, I'm sorry. I love you. I miss you. And if there's anything that I've done that I've offended you, I'm sorry. Because when your mama is gone, she will not come back. There are some people that wish they had their mama back today. And there are some folks that have a mama that's good to them, that will give them anything they want and break their neck for them, and they don't even say thank you. They don't even call their mama on a regular basis. And when they get a piece of money, their mama ain't the first call they make. So I'm going to start doing better, and I'm going to start playing, praying for my children to do better towards me. And I'm going to start it because I believe if I take 100% responsibility for the things that are showing up in my life, then I have the ability to change the outcome. And I can do that through prayer and taking responsibility for enabling my kids and doing everything for them and then wonder why they expect me to do it. You know I ain't going to keep you long tonight, but I just wanted to talk to the parents tonight because I need us to understand sometimes we're creating the mess that we're going through. Sometimes we are spoiling our kids and giving them too much stuff. And sometimes they haven't gone through anything. And by the time they get out here in this world, they're expecting things to be given to them. And they're going to be slapped in the face because this world don't give you nothing. You have to work for it. Nobody is going to care if you don't have the things that you need. They will, you'll be out there homeless and they won't even care. And we have to teach our kids that they have to work hard, good days work for, good days pay, that they need to save their money. There is nothing worse than getting old in America with no money. I promise you, that's the worst hell on earth that anybody can ever, is to be old, sick, and broke in America. So if you haven't saved any money and you listen to me on the sound of my voice right now, start this week. Save, if it ain't but $10, put it away. I've been learning some powerful information and going to some courses that have been helping me understand it's no excuse to not to save money. You can't keep saying, I don't have enough money to save. And you living in a luxury house, driving luxury cars, got a nice job, and you having the things that you need, but then you can't save money. Something is wrong with our reticular activator. You know, that's a little part back in the back of your head. Something's wrong. Save you some money. Talk to your kids about saving money. 
Make sure you don't keep giving them everything that they want when they ask. Make them work for it. Make them understand that things just don't come easy in life. You have to I remember my granddad. I don't know if y'all had a granddad like mine. My granddaddy, I used to ask for, you know, like back in the day, you can get a whole bag of candy for like a quarter or 50 cents when you go to the corner store. Anybody remember those days? Oh, boy, I used to just, I'd be like, granddaddy, can I have a quarter? He said, you sure can. Soon as you wash the car for the quarter, and I would be out there just watching his car and excited about getting that quarter because I was too young to know any better. And then I wanted some more, so I wanted 50 cents. He was like, now, wait a minute now. If you're going to wash one car for a quarter, if you want 50 cents, you have to wash two cars. Now, I didn't know that the man was trying to teach me the value of money at that time. But when I got older, I started to realize, so you know, my granddaddy was a pimp daddy. He, he had me washing cars, cleaning clothes, scratching his head for the things that I wanted. It wasn't no such thing as come in, mama, you got $20 and $20 go in my, come out my purse and go in your hand. And we didn't have that. That wasn't going on. So what I'm saying is we got to change our thinking about how we are teaching our kids about how to acquire things that we want. We're going to have to make it a little harder for them to get what they want because right now they don't appreciate it. They don't appreciate it. They don't say thank you. They don't say, Mama, Daddy, I appreciate you. They don't say anything. And they that nigga, and they have come in with these little, y'all have some teenagers. Boy, these little teenage funky attitudes that are coming across the table right now will make you absolutely snap their neck if they keep talking. They absolutely, oh, I wonder where this is coming from. Now, they know their mama can be crazy sometimes. I don't even know why they even think that they can act crazy, but they've been doing it. They have been doing it. And they say, and things that come out of their mouth and roll in their eyes. Have y'all seen them teenagers roll their eyes at you? I mean it. It is something special. And I'm like, Lord, how am I going to keep from going to jail talking to these teenagers? They are absolutely. They get to the point where they looking at this stuff on TV. They listen to their friends talk to their mom and daddy or parents or whomever's taking care of them. And they think you can, they can talk to you the same way. I'm going to need y'all to cut that off real quick. Sit down, have a conversation. Say, listen, baby. I understand that the TV makes it okay for kids to talk to their parents any kind of way. And I understand that your friends may talk to their parents any kind of way. But before you go through what I'm getting ready to put you through, I'm going to ask for you to reconsider what comes out of your mouth to me. Set some boundaries, hold your ground, and teach these kids how to be with you because i'm telling you if you let them slide they gonna think it's all right and then they you gonna have an interesting household i don't want nobody to go to jail that's listening to me okay i don't want y'all fighting these teenagers don't fight these teenagers and don't be going to a war to war toe-to-toe -to -toe match and cussing at each other and acting a fool don't do that you are the parent you need to sit down have a conversation set some boundaries Tell them what the consequences are if they break those boundaries and hold your ground and keep your word. That's all you got to do. You don't have to holler. You don't have to scream. And you ain't got to almost break their neck and go to jail because I don't look good in orange. I promise you. Not that orange anyway. Make sure. Set some boundaries. Make sure that you hold your ground. Keep your word. And they will get the picture. Now, I'm going to let you go tonight. Thank you for tuning in to It's All About You. I hope that I help some parents tonight because I promise you, I, I've almost went to jail. So I'm trying to let you know that we don't have to go to jail. We have the power because we have the money and we have everything else. We got the lights. We got the water. We got the mortgage. We got the cars they have to ride in. So we have the power. You just have to use your power and be professional about that. And make sure you set your boundaries and keep your word, okay? Don't be dealing with these ungrateful kids. Use your power. I love you, and I, God loves you. And prompt, look, pray over your kids. Pray over them. Make sure you pray for them. Because I'm telling you, there's got to be a spirit going on over this earth that's got these kids acting crazy, shooting people and doing a whole bunch of crazy stuff. 
pray over your kids. Love them anyway, but set you some boundaries and get your household straight. Have a good night. I love you. Bye. Hi.